Hey guys, it's Nick from Retro Games HQ, and today I'm going to be talking about a random encounter system that I made. Even though my ultimate game is not going to have levels, I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a random encounter system that does deal with levels. And I kind of was, uh, you know, I'm going to, I, I tell in the story of the document, and if you ever want to get to the document, go to monstertaming.com forward slash random hyphen encounter and in fact if you just go to monstertaming.com and go to the blog posts i've actually got a blog post of up of the document but it's got some um formatting issues like for some reason i can't get the subscripts to be subscripts and stuff like that so it looks a little weird but let's get on to it and thank you all for watching let's just yeah let's just get into it it's kind of a different video today but Definitions, as I say, don't pay attention to this at the start. Just reference as you read. Now, you can comment on this as there should be perms on the Google uh, Doc to comment if you go through the link I told you about, which I'll have in the description below. So just going through, anyways, pretty much I was thinking of Zokai's uh, color palette system. If you don't know about Zokai, uh, it's zoological yokai. And it's an upcoming monster taming game that has a lot of cool systems already in it or implemented or thought of that's going to be implemented. It's the creator of Zokai is, uh, I'm not going to say, I think genius is overused, but he's extremely smart when it comes to game design. And I'm continuing, just constantly impressed. So, including his color pal palette system, where every tile has a hex color assigned to it, and the overall screen color is then determined by averaging those hex values from visible tiles. So, he averages all the tiles on the screen, and that's going to be the color. So, as you walk, the color is going to change, and it does take into consideration things like, I know, day and night, um, that will change the hex, uh, hex values, all that. It's pretty cool. So from there, like I said, I was uh, drawing an analogy from Zokai's gradual color change system to gradual level for random encounters system. Uh, you know, so one thing I've kind of disliked is when you would get to an area in a game and it's just, you go from a place that, hey, I can easily go through here or I can manage to, why is this suddenly uh 50 times harder or impossible you know where it's just random abrupt punishing you really don't learn anything except well i don't need to go back there for quite some time which is not really that fun so i thought okay let's put it into that anyways as i say the key part of my idea is to give every tile on the screen a level value so there's going to be a tile level value all right, so I was first thinking, I was thinking, well, I need to take into consideration the player monsters level in random encounters. You know, uh, I don't like it when monster levels or the random encounter levels for monsters scale with the player monsters level. I don't like that. Uh, I'm not going to give reasons here, but I, I don't. But I do want to take into consideration the player's monsters level. So anyways, as I say, it should be noted here that later this would turn into the average party's level. So just take all those six uh, monsters, because I'm assuming max level of 100, and I'm assuming that there's a party of six. No more. Anyways... I would later say, well, screw the monster level. Let's look at the average party level. So the first example was the average party monster level, 25, versus the tile level, average tile level of 75. So I ended up labeling that the average party monster level is LV of P and average tile level is LV of E. If you're ever wondering what the heck, just go click on the link. That's why I've got the definitions up top and it's not that complicated i know it can be like oh god there's you're looking like some math going on it's not that difficult it's just making what i'm doing like 75 divided by 23 equals three and you know that's super simple but then you look at 
what it is formally, which is LV of E divided by LV of P equals N. That sounds super scary, but it's not because it quite literally is 75 divided by 25 equals 3. It's that simple when you get the numbers. You plug in the numbers, you got the answers. You just need two numbers, two variables, and you get the answer. It's not that difficult. Don't worry about it. Let's go on. So after that, you know, so the N, as I put it, would be 3. Well, then I thought, huh, you know, if I added that 3 to the 25, that would only get me 28. But there's a 50 level difference. Like, that, that doesn't feel right. So, so I thought, oh, wait, what if I squared it? So what if N squared equals LV of R? And here, as I said, R doesn't really stand for much. I just wanted to identify it something different. So now you've got a nine level difference. Now instead of 28, it will be 34. Um, but that really didn't finish my problem. Like it didn't fix my problem. Now at this point, as I say, you probably want to put the LV of R and LV of P and round them, which becomes the LV of D and LV of T. So the P and LV of P is party, and then the LV of D is going to be difference. So think of this as the party of the level, the level of the party, the level difference, and with LV of T, it's just rounded LV of P, but just think of T as team. So that's how R is just random, but the P is party, D is difference, and T is team. So going on. So at this point, I knew I wanted a smoother transition between areas in terms of random encounters. Immediately thought of a way to expand the number of levels. So yes, it was like, okay, what if I do get it? In, you know, what if the average tile level is 75? What if my average party monster level is 25? And then I get a nine. Uh, level difference and that puts me to 34. I still wasn't happy and I feel like that was too restrictive. Like I'll always hit 34. I'm like nah. I, I didn't really like that. So what I thought of was what if I make a range so that right here 9 plus 25 equals 34 would become the minimum wild monster level encountered which would just be the LV of MIN or minimum level and then you get the minimum level and you add nine or the uh, difference, level difference that gets you to 43. That would be the maximum wild monster level. So this is not complicated. Think of it this way. You get the level difference and then you add it to the average level of the party. There's your minimum. Then add it again to get the maximum wild monster level. So now you have, instead of just 34, it, these monsters can come in from 34 to 43. And I think that's, I thought, well, that's actually good. You know, it's not an immediate 75. Oh God, I'm in the level 75 area with a level 25 team. I'm screwed. It's, yeah, the minimum's almost 10 levels be, uh, above you, which is going to be difficult. And then it's almost two, um, it's almost 20 levels above you at the maximum. Right, this is dangerous grounds, but it's not necessarily impossible. It's not just suddenly br you hit a brick wall and you can't go any further. You can't do anything. It's like, okay, cool. I guess I got to remember this later. I was happy with this range. Now, I am going to go down to one because I do have a note here. Now, the one is having a level 75 area not be a level 75 would help with somebody being completely overwhelmed but still posing a challenge so it does give you a challenge but the problem is if you just face level 75 that's not a challenge because you aren't winning you just unless you just have some weird strat you're and cheesing it you're not going to win so it's not really a challenge but 34 43 definitely 34 that's a challenge that is still a you know, doable. So level 75 at 25 is nearly unbeatable and suddenly being an area yeah so I just explained that now, going back up to it, again, don't be worried about the math. It's literally like, what if the level's 10 and the other level's 5? Okay, that's 2. Now square it, 4. Okay. I mean, it's that simple stuff, so don't worry about it at all. I thought a little bit more and realized that I had a problem when n equals 1. Or rather, 25 divided by 25 equals 1. It's like, okay. But what happens then? So the average tile level would be the same as the average party level 
but they would result in two absurdities. The first being that if you have a level 25 team and you're in an average tile level area of 25, you will never run into a level 25 monster at all. Even though all your party members can be level 25, you will not run into a level 25 monster, which seems definitely absurd. Like, that makes no sense. The second was that the situation, uh, in this situation, the encounter monster would always be a higher level. And that's true. You just get the N, which is one, square it, which is one. You have the level difference. Add that to 25, 26 to 27. That makes no sense. So I thought that something's got to be fixed here. So at first I thought some weird, stupid way, and I, was, I just t tossed it aside. Actually, when I was writing this, because I came up with a much more simplified, a much more consistent, and just a straight-up better system. So ignore that. So, heck, first off, if n equals 1, then the level difference should just equal 0. If 25 is the tile average tile uh, level, and the average party level is 25, uh, there should be no difference. You should be facing level 25. Like, you finally got there, it should be at level 25. Now, of course, all that really is for n... If n is greater than 1, remember n is just simply the average tile level divided by or over the average party level. Not that difficult whatsoever. Pretty simple stuff. So if that's greater than 1, but not equal to, but greater than, then you know this is, this is what we've just covered. This all looks like some complicated math stuff, but it's actually not. It's We just went over that. I said LV of E, you know, it's like this is the average tile level, average uh, party level, N, square it. Though, wow, you got the LV of R, but then you want to round these two for reasons that uh, I'm not going to explain, but you can see, I think, pretty plainly, especially later on. And then you get the LV of T, or rather the rounded average level of your party, and then you add the difference. The, the level difference, and then you add it again to get the max. So you get your min max real fast, easy. So what about um, 24 divided by 25? You know, you're one level higher than the average tile level. Well, that's 0.96. But squaring it creates a smaller than one number. But following the rules for n is greater than 1, that would lead to an absurdity of... Let me just fix this real fast. This would lead to an absurdity of an area's monsters becoming stronger despite being over-leveled. Or lower-leveled. Think of it this way. It rounds to 1. That means it would go to 26 to 27. Despite the average tile level being lower than your level, it would add uh, 1 and then 2 levels to the encounter you you you'd pretty much be facing stronger levels uh, leveled monsters despite you being in a lower leveled area which makes no sense whatsoever so allowing them to be the uh, lv of d or the level of difference equaling zero could make sense to an extent but i really had some other ideas in mind and the first one was that i want there to be some incentive for players to move on to another area and just saying hey you're overpowered get it's better shown if you make the mon the what's already weaker monsters than you even weaker so it's like an extra incentive to be like get out of here this ain't your place move on now the second one would be the second thing i want to happen is i want to make the player feel powerful when they get beyond a certain level in relation to specific levels uh for example yes as a, I'm kind of reading, but level 30 is 20 above level 10. But to level 30, those level 10s might as well be levels 6 to 8. Like, there's not much difference, if any. And you can feel the, you know, I'm pretty much thinking, you know, it'd be just like, you know, uh, there's no difference when you're level 30. Level 6 and level 10 is going to be the same, you know, as uh, level 30. And I wanted to really show... And make it feel like you've made progress. The players made progress. The third thing is I want to encourage grinding lower leveled monsters in higher level areas. So higher tile level areas. Average tile level areas. This naturally 
Uh, this is naturally incentivized because of the amount of experience gained from higher levels, but I want to push them more and make it the slightest bit more challenging. And I'll show this uh, example after I get through some of this. Anyways, I decided to make four new rules that covered between uh, zero and one for n because you cannot get you can't even get to zero and you can't go lower than zero. Don't worry about all this math crap. This is actually extremely simple stuff. This is very basic stuff. Six, seven, eighth graders can get this. Okay, don't freak out. Let's look at it. So, if it's 0.75 less than or pretty much okay i'm not going to go through it but every 0.25 for the n not n squared but the n i decrease the level by one the level of difference by one so when you're just getting under one and until you hit 0.75 or technically anything under 0.75 then i'm going to make the level of difference negative one but and here's the key. Notice one thing. This is LV of F. Now, LV of F, okay, is equal to the LV of E rounded. And LV of E is what you put over, th that's the average tile level. So the LV of F is just the rounded average tile level. Super simple. But then you have the level difference being negative one. And so you subtract not from the average party level, but from the rounded average tile level. This is so that it actually decreases in a level versus keep going up, but slightly under the player. So it's where areas can actually be pretty much where they don't. Uh, it's like maybe they are negative four on the level of difference. But you're at like level 80 and you're this is a level 20 average tile area so that would put it to you know 80 that put it to 72 to 76 and that makes no sense so i put it to the rounded average tile level average again if you want to go through this more slowly i've got the paper in the document in the description below linked and again this is not complicated gonna be honest so as to my three points, it does all three. So all three of these, it does all of them. Here's an example that I was talking about. Suppose someone has five level 20 monsters and one level 100 monster. And the visible area has an average tile level of 35. So don't worry. You know, just five level 20s, one level 100, and an average tile level area of 35. Now, this would result in level 34 to 35 mons appearing after you do the math. Now, suppose all of those five leveled up to 25. This would result in an N below one and would spawn wild monsters from level 34 to level 30 or 33 to level 34. It would encourage, even if just slightly, the player to go to a higher level area and not just stay in the same, as I put it, easy pickings area. So you've already got this incentive of um, they're, they're getting lower. They're not as high of a level as what they were to you relative. And eventually it starts going down. Eventually it's like, okay, yeah, maybe I do have level 25s, but they're only level 33 to 34. Well, if I go to this area with my level 100, I can be facing level 60, 70, and that's going to give me more EXP than that. So it's like another little nudge, you know, another little incentive to get kids, to get, not kids, well, I mean, give kids, play the game, whatever. I'm thinking, whatever. To get them like, to hey, go over to this, uh, you know, wild area or whatever you want to call it where you can in randomly encounter things i'm guessing you don't want to have all tiles being uh encounter tiles but who knows so to this point the leveling system would already incentivize going to higher level areas if you're grinding so let me do this just little things so imagine a party of five level 20s and one level 100 as we already had in the example before in an area with the average tile level being 100 now this would spawn monsters of levels 42 to 51 
even if they leveled up to level 50s, the spawn levels would still be 61 to 64. So you can see that you can either get EXP from level 34, 35 at best to, hey, level 42 to 51. And even when you, um, you know, have a 250% increase in your level for these level 20s, you're still going to be facing stuff that's 11, 14 levels higher than the uh, monsters, than, except for the level 100 monster. So it already incentivizes it. So this system, while incentivizing higher levels, like as in going to higher tile level areas, it also incentivizes using lower level monsters to train even more lower level monsters. So you think, well, it's kind of complicated. No, 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 no. Just think of instead of a level 100, you're going down to level 60 or 70 or something, and you're still having the level 20s. That's what I'm talking about. Now, this is an alternative to just using out maxed monsters. For example, take a party of five level 1s and a level 50 mon in an area with the average tile level of 50. So it's easy. Five, ones, 150 in an area that is average of 50. Okay. Just don't have to, don't do the math in your head. Trust me. I've done the math multiple times. This all works out. If you want to, you can, but it's not necessary. That's an average party level of approximately nine with a level difference and range of 30. Because remember, the level difference is also the range. So you got to remember that. Now, encounters will, uh, will be levels 39 to 69. As an, and as I say, nice. But uh, this will be shown, the significance of this will be shown in the next area. But I want to go down to, level, to note two, which is my last note. So the reason why I'm fine with the range exceeding the average tile levels are because uh, to a level 9 monster, a level 50 monster might as well be as strong as a level 69 monster, let's be honest. It allows for the player to play riskier and possibly gets better rewards. So, hey, I can go in this area, I can get really good EXP, but there is a chance that I'm going to be encountering a monster that is even higher level than my highest level monster in my party. And yes, I may get some good rewards from it, but it is a risk and it is a challenge. And that challenge, if you do rise to it and you beat it, um, you get more EXP. It's it's uh, risk plus you get benefits. And it would deter button mashing if there's suddenly a higher level monster than you uh, than even your highest level party monster. And I would actually say it could deter button mashing even if it's not higher, even if it's not the same, because you know you have a level fifty and suddenly a level a level 47 comes along, you may be not as fast to mash that A button or that Z button or whatever, or key or whatever. <laughs> but going back to the this, so remember the example I just gave you. Now, let's just re to show that it does incentivize going to higher high level areas and using lower level monsters uh, for your highest level monster. If you replace the level 50 monster with a level 100 monster, the encounter levels drop to 26 to 34. So they go from 39 to 69 to 26 to 34. So you have less challenge, less rewards, but there is less risk. Uh, of course, level 50 would be more risky, but you could res uh, you could pretty much have increased gains. And that would include increased gains for the level 50 monster, as you could be pretty much grinding for these lower level monsters, but then getting significant enough experience that you're actually helping your level 50 monster, or level 60 monster, or whatever the case is. Now, going on, what I was thinking, I was thinking, okay, well, what if I had, what if I tried to cheese? I was thinking stress testing kind of thing, you know, where can I find the absurdities in this system that needs to be fixed? So I thought, well, what if I have a level 100, like the ultimate cheese? You're getting a level 100 monster to level up five level ones. Just the ultimate cheese experience when it comes to leveling up. And then you go to a level, a tile level 100 area. So the average tile level is 100. You just do the math, the encounter levels will be between 51 and 84. Now, that may be a high, that may be high, but the problem is here that even 84 wouldn't be a problem for a level 100. Unless the level 100 just is horrible and just trash, it's still not going to be a problem. 
This means that you can never, well, this is another thing, you can never get a level 100 encounter with this team, which would limit the experience gained and, incre and increasing possibly repetitive grinding. So it might be like, oh god, more grinding, more grinding, more just press A, press A, press A, because you're not getting as much experience because you cannot encounter a level 100 uh, thing without, uh, sorry, not thing, but encounter without almost being level 100 or being level 100. Now, the player could also try to cheese a rare encounter. So, say they go to a level, average level, tile level area of uh, 100. And there's a rare monster because it's a, it's the max level, right? It's 100. It's the tile level's maxed out. Where else would you hide a rare monsters? Well, with that team of 5 ones and 1 100, you could possibly being, you could possibly cheese it with battling a rare monster in an area and, and instead of battling them at level 100 you can battle them at level 51 which is a problem considering that's cheesing that's not how it's supposed to be not how it was probably intended and it decreases the difficulty in a way that's not rewarding and the difficulty was rewarding but kind of just just as if you could easily um clone mewtwo's or something like that that that's a problem and that devalues the one that you can get. Now this would take away from the significance of doing the challenge and facing them with the max uh, level party. So level 100 party. You know, it's not as rewarding as, hey, I beat this level 100 monster with my 100, my level 100 team or party. And their guy can be like, well, I beat him at level 51 because I just had one level 100. It's like... So you're being punished for bringing a proper team, a strong team, to battle something strong. And you are incentivized to pretty much bring a weak team except one. And there's actually another problem that's different from these. The higher the average party level is, the less the level difference in range become. So again, the higher the average party level is, the less the level difference in range will become. Having a team of level 70s go to an area with an average tile level of 100 and the encounters would be only 72 to 74 this would make higher level grinding excruciating it would be so slow compared to lower level you could shoot up to these higher levels really fast and then it's just a slow grind thank god there's an easy fix for it and i figured it out so while the maximum monster level is 100 the maximum tile level doesn't have to be capped at 100. What level would 100% fix the four problems I just stated? Well, the answer would be the one that made the smallest level difference possible 100. Now, if someone could say 99, cool, I'm just going to go 100. We'll just go one higher, make it convenient for all of us. So, no matter what level you are, you're getting capped out at level 100 for, your, for the monster encounter, period. No way to cheese. Now, the way our equations are set up, however... It makes it so that when the denominator, or rather the average party level, the thing on the bottom, becomes lower, the N becomes bigger. So if you have uh, 10, tile, 10 on top, 5 on bottom, that's a 2N. But if you have 10 on top and 1 on, bo on bottom, that's a 10. You see how you wouldn't be looking where we need to look is not at the lower levels. Where we need to be looking is at the higher levels, because if we're looking for the smallest level difference possible, we actually have to go to the highest level. Now, we also have to take into account that the N gets squared before becoming the level difference. So we're not looking for 100, we're not looking for N to be 100, we're looking for N to be 10 at max level 100. So 100 times 10 is 1000. Because you're just getting the square root, right? It's where you're... It's, it works out, okay? Just do the math. <laughs> we must do the math. It works out so that the N just needs to be 10 because the N being 10 is going to mean the level difference is 100. And we need to get the, level, the smallest level difference to be 100. And the place you can get the small... The level you can get the smallest uh, level difference is at level 100 and then it would need to be 10 for that 100 level difference at 100 anyways that means that we need a level 1000 maximum cap 
for tile levels. So any given tile level can be between can be and be between one and one thousand. Now all four problems that I just talked about are completely fixed when it comes to bringing the tile level max up to one thousand. So a team with lower than one hundred level one hundred mons could encounter a level one hundred monster. Rare mons could be prevented from being cheesed. The significance of facing rare mons is intact. And higher level mons could also grind against mons with just two to four levels more than them. So, again, you're, you can force a level 100 counter. You can put these rare monsters in like something like, you know, tile level 1000, for example, 1000 areas. You can, you don't have the problem of it being cheese, so the significance of facing these rare monsters, that's intact. And then you have these higher level monsters can actually grind against monsters that's not just 2 to 4. I mean, it could be like 10, 15 levels higher than them, stuff like that. So it's not as much of a problem grinding. Now this level, the title, uh, the tile level cap of 1000 could also be strategically placed in the world and cause some interesting encounters. Think about, imagine, well just imagine hiding a level 300 tile where there's 15 level 30 tiles. And they can all be seen on the screen. So now suppose there's a team of the average level of 25. Before having that level 300 tile on the screen, the players encountering monsters between levels 26 to 27, that doesn't help with grinding much. Not much. Even though it's level 30 tiles, you're only getting 26 to 27 level uh, encounters. Now, after having that, after, you know, putting that level 300 tile in on the screen, now they're going to be encountering levels 29 to 33, which is a bit more. I mean, 33 can be a handful, actually, for level 25. Now imagine if you had a level a tile level of 1,000, and instead you got monsters with levels of 38 to 51, which is significant. But don't think of, oh, well, all these monsters are 25. you got to remember that's the average party level, meaning it can be... Uh, very low monsters plus very high monsters and that again can help with experience and even if they are level 25 it's like something to discover as what i'm actually about to talk about which is that it would be something interesting to discover to figure out which tiles are the higher level tiles in an area and a dev could also make it so that rarer mons can be encountered if that high level tile is visible only when a high level tile is visible, you can see it. I think that'd be pretty freaking awesome. Of course, one could just mix and match these levels and have an interesting area where 10 steps up increases the level 5 levels, but 5 steps to the right would increase them by 20 levels. I think this would bring about kind of a very dynamic uh, wild area, if you want to call it. <laughs> just an area where you can encounter things because then you can make you can just experiment if you're the player you can go around and experiment try to figure out where you can get the higher level or lower level monsters maybe you're lower level and you're like oh man i can't go to the bottom right here i need to go to the top left or something like that yeah, i think it would bring some pretty interesting uh, stuff whether you're low level or higher level whether you're trying to grind or whether you're trying to avoid Things like that. I think it'd be a pretty interesting thing. You're actually doing some adventuring. You know, you're actually having to discover. You're not just, hey, here's an area. Just keep going straight through it. It's, huh, let me think about this. Let me find these things out. I think it'd be add to a challenge meaningfully. The last thought that comes to mind when I was writing, well, the last thought that did come to mind when I was writing about this and thinking about this and writing this article was the system actually increases the usefulness of an area when it be, when it comes to encounters and what i mean by this is go look at pokemon's areas once you get past an area with level 25 monsters average of level you know maybe there's 24 23 but there's 27 and then you get higher level than that there's almost no reason to go back there unless you're going from point a to point b or there's something in the story or you're shiny hunting or you're trying to fill your Pokedex or you just want your favorite Pokemon. There's almost no reason to go back to that level 25 area place. That place where when you were there, they were level 25 monsters. Not a problem for this system. It could be 
completely avoided. So imagine going through an area with an average party level of 20 and the average tile level is 35, 15 level difference. The monsters encountered there could be level well, would be levels 23 to 26. Now that would be a bit challenging, but it's completely doable. Now once a player gets through that area, they can come back there even when they're 14 levels higher at level 34, and they'd still be facing wild monsters that are still higher level than them. The longevity of an area could also be greatened if there was a higher level tile somewhere hidden along with the level 35 tile. So it would turn the average tile level from 35 to say, um, you know, 61 or 46 or something like that. And so, yeah, that's my random encounter system. Again, go in the description below if you want to see it. Thank you for watching. I just wanted to make this just to get it out there. Um, I thought about this for a little while and I was, I just wanted people's opinions on it really. Because I've not seen a system like this before. I'm not saying I'm an expert on it. But I do think it is interesting. Not just because I made it, but because many random encounter systems have problems. I feel like, now I feel like I know when it comes to this. It's just, it's all like over-leveled or it's all under-leveled. Or you have the problem of something, sometimes, especially post-game stuff. You have a problem leveling up sometimes if you don't have, if they didn't build in some way for you to get a ton of experience. It can be difficult to get your level 70, level 80 monster up to finally level 100. Or even sometimes getting past like 60, it feels like it's a grind just to keep battling and keep battling. And you know, there's really no, there's no level places where there's really levels above like 60, 70, let alone 80, 90, or even 100. I mean, I'm sure there's some games where you'll encounter level 100 monsters, but I can think of many where that you're never going to encounter a level 100 monster. But I think incre the key here to really fixing it at the end is increasing the tile level to 1000 so that you can force level 100 encounters. Even if you do um, try to cheese it, it, you can force it to be up to level 100. I think that's a pretty good uh, system so that it punishes you to for bringing that many level ones. You know, uh, you better be able to beat that level 100 with just that level 100 monster that you have. Unless you can do some weird tactics like put them down to a few HP and then you have a uh, attack that does a guaranteed amount of damage and has uh, the highest priority possible or some crazy stuff like that. Anyways, that's all for this video. I thought it was interesting. Hope you all liked it. And I'll see you in the next one. Retro on.